Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm sharing with you the books and resources we're using for a dinosaur unit study. So this unit study complements our rocks, minerals, and earth science unit and it also works really well to transition into a reptiles unit and I'm also pairing it with an evolution unit. So all of these units that are kind of going together are slightly on the smaller side compared to the unit studies that we generally approach but all together they make a really big unit. So we're going to be breaking this down so today I'm just going to Share with you the books and resources for the dinosaur unit but be sure to check out some of those other videos as well they're listed down in the description box below and on the website the blog post that accompanies this video has all of the different resources listed together as well as links to these resources so let's dive in i want to say that i have had it on my mind to do a dinosaur unit for ages and we never actually put it together as a unit study so i'm going to share with you the resources that i've collected but we've actually never put this together in a complete unit even though we have read through these books not cover to cover of course and we've done some of these projects we haven't actually sat down and put it together as a unit with a main lesson book and entries and work that goes with the reading material and the lessons that we did so this is somewhat of like an encyclopedia of of all the different dinosaurs. And the thing with dinosaurs and the study on dinosaurs is that there are constantly new theories and revisions and discoveries. And so when you are doing a unit like this, I would recommend that you get more of the latest books. These are not the latest books. Some of these are actually quite old, to be honest. But I would recommend that you, if you're starting out, I wouldn't say buy these books in particular. I would say buy some of the newer books that are available in case they have more recent studies or research or discoveries. This is just a really fun book to really dive into and like look at all the pictures and if your children, I find that really young children are really into dinosaurs but they might be too young to read the content but they would certainly love to look at the pictures and if your children are a little bit older or they know how to read then this would be something that would captivate their attention no doubt for hours, days, weeks and you know little young children when they get into a, a topic of discovery and interest they usually die real deep. Okay, the next book I want to share with you is The Days of the Dinosaur Coloring Book. And I picked this one up to complement the unit. And honestly, my children are never have never really gotten into coloring books. And they might have done a few pages here and there, but it wasn't ever really their thing. And so we never actually got to use this. But I do appreciate, and there's a whole series of them. You'll find lots of different ones in the series. Um, it's Dover Coloring Book. Let me make sure. Um, yeah, Dover Coloring Book. So these coloring books come with some information that's pertinent to the illustration that you can color. And if your child is really into coloring, then this is fabulous because then you could read a little bit of content, which is not very much at all. I love that it has the correct pronunciation for the dinosaur names because those have always been difficult for me. And then your child can do the illustration, which would be really fantastic if you didn't want to do a full main lesson book. You could actually use this as your main lesson, in my opinion. You could use this as your main lesson book by reading the content the children could color in, and then there's some blank spaces where the child could actually write a little bit of their own narration if they wanted to. Some pages have more blank space pages. I'm sorry, some blank pages have more space than others and that way you could include some of your other resources and I think this would be like a really great way to kind of make it fun and easy and less um, less labor intensive. Okay, this is a really fun kind of hands-on uh, book that I think would appeal to so many children who are into dinosaurs and even if you're not my children have really enjoyed this series of books so it's called Dinosaur Hunter and it's by Ultimate Expeditions and what's great about this and I think when, the thing with us is that when we get into something we really get into it and then we ended up with I think maybe five books in this series for like the jungle and arctic and all these other things and I think what happened was I was at uh, I think it was a scholastic book fair. I think this is where I got my first one. And it was 
just deeply discounted and it was in our homeschool room literally for years before we actually incorporated it into one of our lessons or one of our unit studies and when we discovered and this is slightly different than the rest of the series this i think there are two that are a little bit different than the rest of the series but the whole concept is pretty similar it comes with the materials that you pop out and then you assemble like a little scene with the dinosaurs or in the case of the other books it would be different animals with you know a landscape and what ended up happening was that once we did one of them after many years of having I think it was the jungle book or red for uh, I'm sorry rainforest book once we did that the kids were just totally into it and then I found more and then we we tried to read it but they were more interested in actually assembling the little figures that you could play with and so anything that involves hands-on projects or something that's play oriented my children are really going to love and i'm really going to love for them because so much engagement and learning can happen through play and through hands-on projects so this is another really fun interactive book Probably one of the very first books I ever got on dinosaurs is this one called The Nature Company Discovery Library Dinosaurs. And this was the original book that we used when we were learning about dinosaurs. And it's it's pretty straightforward. But again, uh, if this book is hard to find, I would just recommend getting whatever is most available and easy to find. The thing about my unit studies now that we have done them and main less main lesson blocks for many years, I find that I would get really excited about a main lesson block or a unit study and I would go to the library or I would buy books and I would find projects and I really packed it quite a bit. And now I realize that sometimes I would or often I would double up on books that were really similar without realizing it. And as you read through them, if we were reading something that was similar, one of two things would happen. One, we would either, it would be too much and we would just be disinterested, or it would be an opportunity to reflect on the material that we already learned. So if we were doing something that was similar, I could just maybe not even complete the sentence and ask my child to finish the sentence if it was something that we had recently learned from another book within that same unit. So there's, there's sort of, there's a pro and con to doing uh, so much you know, what looks like variety, which ends up being a little bit redundant, that you can use it as a repetition tool and a memory tool and something to reflect on and then kind of quiz a little bit along the way. Or it can just drag out your main lesson block or unit study and the children can just lose steam and lose interest. So this book would be similar to the dinosaur encyclopedia. And so if I were doing this again, I would just choose one book or if I own both of them, I might just choose sections from each book rather than thinking that I have to read it from cover to cover. And you absolutely can do that. It took me a long time to realize that you don't need to read a cover, a book cover to cover. And I found that that was just a much easier way to get through the books that we had and the resources that we had and still enjoy all of them and get a little bit out of each kind of book. The dinosaur, uh, the dinosaurs, this is the Waterhouse Hawkins. This is um, a picture book and I love adding picture books with all of our unit studies and main lesson blocks. There's certainly books that we would read on a regular basis, like, you know, bedtime stories, but I like the books that have a little bit more factual content that we can include in our main lesson block or unit study and there is a bit of a difference between a main lesson block and a unit study and you can find more information in the description box below because I talk about it often but I enjoy including picture books into our main lesson blocks and unit studies because I think they're a really beautiful way to engage children um, they could just be playing they don't need to look at the pictures in fact if you're following more of a Waldorf methodology you're probably not using picture books and you're probably storytelling most of the time so I I love including them even though we follow more of a Waldorf approach. But my children either will sit next to me and look at the pictures and listen, or they'll be playing while I'm reading books, as long as they're not too noisy, because that gets a little bit distracting. 
And of course, now that my children are a little bit older, I'm reflecting on when they were younger because I don't have young children who are sitting next to me to um, read picture books. So that's a little bit sad for me. But um, if you still have young children who enjoy uh, sitting on your lap or next to you and reading picture books, then you'll probably enjoy having some books like this. This would I would consider this like more of like, say, a, a, a middle or young elementary, not like a preschool book. This is has way more content. Picture books are of a wide variety of uh, they appeal to different age groups and so you can have like the really simple ones for you know two three four year olds even the board books and then you have the ones that are maybe preschool and kindergarten level I would place this at kindergarten level or above just because of the content itself and the length of the book Here's another hands-on book. It's called Uncover T-Rex. Uh, take a three-dimensional look inside a T-Rex. We have this as well for anatomy and we might have one for sharks as well. And while I love the concept of this book, I didn't find that we were able to utilize it as much as I hoped. Not in this unit and not in other units that we've done, or that we've had this kind of book. I think it's super neat, but for some reason it didn't land well. Now, I just learned recently from my sister who is in her fourth and final year sorry fourth and final year of Waldorf training and she told me that studying the innards the insides the bone structure the center of the earth the insides of things isn't something that you actually do until high school and so if I guess it, it, it makes sense that these books weren't landing as well as I thought. They probably weren't developmentally appropriate for them. Not to say that I would get rid of them at this point, but they're just maybe we would do this one and maybe focus on some of the outer bits and not say the bone structure. And I'm glad that she told me that because it makes sense now for some of the resources that I thought were fabulous and so creative and yet they just didn't really seem to go anywhere with my kids. Not to say that you can't still include this, not to say that your kids might not still enjoy this, but it, there is a development where it really is profound for them to understand something that is maybe not well understood from a developmental age when they're younger. So the bone structure, the the core of the planet, those things that you, you can get a child to repeat back to you and it, it looks like they're understanding, but from a deep developmental perspective, some topics are best served later. Okay, let's move on to um, the last few resources here before we, we dive into some of the hands-on projects and games. Actually, just toys. And games. Um, if you need a read aloud for your dinosaur unit, I love Journey to the Center of the Earth. I've used it for other units as well, like our geology unit. I love this book so much. I've um, There is a, an audio version, and I know that there are several, and so if I can find the one that I particularly like, you'll find it in the description box below. But if not, just know that when it comes to Jules Verne, I do prefer to listen to the books rather than read them, only because they're so science heavy, and it's f science fiction, just to be clear, uh, but it's so science heavy that a, a lot of the terminology, I'm just struggling through it uh, to pronounce the words that listening to it was a lot more enjoyable for us than trying to make my way through some of the content. But Journey to the Center of the Earth is a great read aloud or just a fiction that you could include for your geology or science, dinosaur, fossils unit. It would work for a number of units. Zoo books. Um, this is probably like a vintage uh, resource at this point, um, but it appeals to me for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it's it's short and easy, and I think Zoo Books has a lot of different topics. I don't even think they're still in publication anymore, but I could be wrong. And what I like about it is that not only is it small, so it feels like you could get through this and not have to invest too much time or effort but also i like the illustrations and i know they are so retro and aged and vintage but i this is the kind mostly the kind of illustrations that i really like so it appeals to me personally but maybe your kids will not find it so cool uh dinosaur and mummies beyond bare bone fossils we included this book when we did our geology or science unit which included fossils but i've also included it here with the dinosaur unit it goes into a couple of different areas of different sciences but i also um 
have this book specifically on dinosaur fossils but i find that this one even though it looks like it's going to be an easy picture book it's actually quite dense and so while we intended to do this as a read aloud we actually didn't get through very much of it before we just found it to be a little bit heavier than we expected not to say that this still isn't a great resource just be prepared that this is not like a really quick easy picture book for a quick easy picture book you can have barnum's bones how barnum brown discovered the most famous dinosaur in the world is by tracy fern and this is by scholastic so you're going to you're going to find you know affordable and um beautifully done books from a wide variety of topics when you're looking for scholastics and it, they're they're really well priced for the most part and so this one is just another great little picture book that you can add there are probably way more picture books available and other resources available so just if you pop into the library i'm sure there's a huge section on dinosaurs and fossils just because it's one of those sciences that really appeals to young children in my opinion and it's it's grand and it's fantastical and i just feel like it's just a really fun science to dive into okay we have Dinosaur Lady. Uh, for a while, I was finding as many uh, female role models and scientists as possible to include in our homeschool. And this one is Dinosaur Lady, The Daring Discoveries of Mary Anning, the first pa pa uh, paleontologist. And this one is just a, a great story to have. These aren't the kind of illustrations that I'm super keen about. However, this is where the book illustrations are moving towards a lot more of the um, computer graphics, computer animation type of illustrations. I'm not actually quite sure what you would call them exactly. Um, a lot of skill does go into doing them and so I don't want to dismiss them uh, on that account. It's just not personally the kind that I that I go for. I think it's still really well done. I think the illustrations are fine. Um, the story is what I'm really in for for this particular one. And you'll see, like, it's still like a lot of effort is made for these illustrations versus, I know that you've seen them where there may just be some really big illustrations, a few different colors and a really basic storyline. And those ones, I'm just like, I'm going to pass on those. Um, so what I love about this book is just the gumption of this scientist and at a time where she probably wasn't taken seriously and it was mostly a man's domain when it came to science especially and she's just having none of it so i i love that um so i would encourage you to pick up this book or something similar and if you haven't already pick up as many female role models um picture books or otherwise for your students because it's not just good for your girls it's also good for your boys and then one of the last um, bits of resources I have here is National Geographic Expedition, and this is Dinosaur Egg Hunt. And I actually had this, it's a replica, of course, but I actually had it in our homeschool room for ages, and I actually can't find it now. But this is, this is more scientific-based, more research-based, but it is probably dated at this point. So I, honestly, I don't know how much of it would still be... Um, relevant i'm sure there are some details that are that have changed however i still would probably use this on a, on a limited capacity when um when presenting this because i already have it i would not go out and buy it specifically for this unit but because these are some of the resources that we currently have i would definitely include them okay let me show you one of our fossil collection specimen samples it's it's in this tray here with these little removable bits this was from my scrapbooking um, supplies and so i repurposed it for our homeschool because it fit these little things just perfectly and this was the original kit it's called fossil collection with geological time scale 12 identified specimens and it's an educational unit and I don't know that I have who it's by, but it came with these um, little cards that talked about each of the specimens. And I have since removed them from their little baggies and put them in here. So, um, but because they come with illustrations, then we can at least identify which ones are supposed to go in which area. However, these ones, um, this one I believe is one that we actually mined ourselves at a place called Mineral Wells in Texas. And that fossil site, and granted this was in 2012, 2013 time, 
that place was free. It was in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but it was a beautiful drive from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So maybe about an hour and a half out of Dallas-Fort Worth area. And they had just the fossils were the, the fossil site. First of all, it was fairly easy to find. And it was, imagine a dry riverbed and there were just fossils everywhere. Like you just, you just scooped up a, a scoop of of earth and there would be fossils and it was fabulous and that was i think our second or third or fourth fossil dig um that would that was just so much fun um previously we went to utah to a place called you dig and i just checked and they are still um in business and available and we did a little fossil dig for trilobites and trilobites if i'm not mistaken are half a billion years old so 500 million years old back when the whole of the united states minus california <laughs> was under a shallow sea and that's um i hope that information is correct it's been a while since we did that dig and learned that information so this um this little fossil arrangement oh actually this is from a different fossil dig kit this is um, I think a lizard tooth and i think this is dinosaur excrement yeah a uh, aquatic dinosaur actually yeah aquatic dinosaur anyway we had some kits that we've used in the past i don't have the kits to show you but on the blog post that accompanies this video you'll be able to find all of those videos and the resources that we used for those kits they're all on the blog post so check that out if you want to have those um, that information okay um, I have just a couple more things to show you. We used to do uh, the the nature. I think this is a nature watch kit, and these this kit was for um, amber. So you you had like all of the material here to scrub it clean and polish it and see if maybe you could find a little insect that was caught in your amber. Um, we didn't when we did this project, but I did buy the classroom kit, which means that I have plenty left over for another unit or for other students. Um, their kits are amazing. They have tons and tons and tons of classroom kits. And then they also have a homeschool kit, which would give you one of like maybe 10 different kits that they have available which is a really great option if you didn't want to buy the whole kit um we are rather the whole classroom kit i almost always bought the classroom kit because that way at the time when i was homeschooling two or three of my children it, the the cost wasn't that much more to do that to have it for future uh unit studies and for us to do more than one project which was a lot of fun like for this one your kid might want to do more than one or two um polishing like say the amber for instance and then for the other ones we would just do multiple projects like if we were planting seeds or we had a pine tree growing kit one time we just did multiples of them or we could share it with other homeschoolers so that was a really fun project Sorry, that's quite loud. Let's just put that aside for a minute. I'll just pour that. Okay, the last couple of things. Um, so I picked the, these up from, I think, the Dollar Tree when we were going to do our dinosaur unit. Um, and my my kids were just out of the range of playing with them. But I held on to them um, because they just... They delighted me and we don't do a lot of plastic toys and my kids never really got into dinosaurs the way other children did so it, it was just a, a, a bit of good fun and then we have two little dinosaurs that were probably in some kind of little kit that i also kind of held on to as well so professor noggins has some of my favorite trivia games this one is the dinosaur game it comes with a dice which we never use but we will um, and also they've gone through some major updates and I think that as the years go by, they're going to probably take all of the trivia games that they have and update them so they won't have the illustrations anymore. This is the old version. They'll have photographs. And at first I was really not liking the new ones, but they've actually kind of grown on me. So the the layout is like vertical rather than horizontal for the questions and then the instead of illustrations you'll have photos and sometimes you have a photo of like say a chart 
or a photo of an illustration, but they're all like more photo based versus illustration based. So this is a trivia based game. So this is not something that we had a lot of luck playing at the beginning of our unit. This is something that you play after you start the unit, or this is something you play when you move on to a new unit and you use this to review your old unit. So it comes with an illustration on one side, it comes with questions on the flip side, easy and hard. And the way that I would play it with my kids is that we might just take like five cards each and then ask each other the questions and whatever question we got right or the rather the card because we'd just ask the one question and there are six available and sometimes there are less if there's like a noggin's choice then we would keep the card and at the end we tally up to see who got the most cards and then that was just a really fun way to open our activities it doesn't work so well at the beginning if you don't have enough information then it's just plain frustrating and then if you remember the answers because you're told the answer even though you got it wrong then playing it later you kind of have to forget some of the questions and the answers in order to make it usable again because it is trivia based but because there are so many questions on the card you can play it multiple times and i i've really enjoyed them i love the hands-on or rather the game nature of the of this activity and i love including it into our opening activities before we actually start our lessons. I forgot, I have one more hands-on project. This is called Dinosaur Discovery and it's by Excavating Adventures. And they are a fabulous little company that has all these different excavation projects for like say fossils or dinosaurs or gemstones, rocks, all different kinds. And what's really great is that, so, few years ago they um, sent me three kits for free that I shared or maybe four kits and you can find all of the videos um, on the the blog post that accompanies this this um, video but also you can find them on the different unit studies that we did for the different topics like from um, our geology unit and our dinosaur unit so this one I mean look at these specimens they're absolutely fabulous but what was really cool and this is amber and oh look at this so beautiful um, what was really neat about this kit that was so different from any of the other excavation kits that we did was that each little kit first of all it was really tiny it was like maybe in a in a little container this size and they might have changed because this was maybe five years ago maybe less um, it was in a little container about this size and each of the excavating materials were different so one of them was more of like a gel sort of slimy base one was one that you like plaster base where you really had to excavate it um, there was one that I think was more like sand anyway it was really neat and they probably even have more now it was a, a really creative approach to the excavation um, and I really enjoyed that um, well, the kids really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the creativity. So this is another one of the kits and it also came with, um, well, it comes with the information and the, uh, the pictures on the one side, but it also came with these little, um, cards. So it was like trading cards. And this one was for the, um, minerals kit and this one is for the dinosaur kit and i think there were there was a gem kit maybe that's this one so it comes with the little trading cards and then all of the info on the back and it's really cool they have like different points and things like that and i think it even came with the little sleeve as well so it was really nicely done really nice details i really appreciate that and then you have like the little stickers that come with each of the kits so that you can collect them all and there's a little like a little card that you can fill out with all of the different stickers so that was a really nice nice little touch Okay, so that uh, sums up the resources for the dinosaur unit, but please check out some of the other units that go along with them. We have one on reptiles, we have one on evolution, and we have this one on dinosaurs and fossils. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find that link down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.